Hi, welcome back to the Dylan Rounds case. Welcome if you're currently here in this short live video premiere. We've got an important video today and a key focus and it's around me in recent time coming across some material, a post by Justin Rounds, which is a little bit cryptic. It wasn't fully explained and it's suggestive that it could apply to the Dylan Rounds case. The key thing is though, End result, the post was taken down and deleted by Justin Rounds, a very similar pattern to what we've seen in the past. So today, I'm gonna to be sharing with you the post because I did get a screenshot of it before it was removed. Look at it, analyze, see what the photo is all about, the location, the hidden meaning behind it. Is it directly tied within the Dylan Rounds case? Yes or no? and just see if we can reach a conclusion. That's what we're gonna be looking at today. Yes, the video could be a bit shorter, but I just wanna get straight to the point. Feel free, it is enough time to share your thoughts, opinions, and reactions in the live chat in the box on the right-hand side. We can check the comments out of the previous video, but we'll do that later on in this video, okay? So, you know, to kick things off, we'll just get right into it. Take in mind, if you didn't check my previous videos out, I will provide a link as well down below in the pinned comment section, as well as some additional links if you wish to visit them, okay? So without further ado, we're just gonna get straight into the screenshot and then I'll explain it from there. So here is the post. You can see Justin Round's profile, top left corner of the screen. Now, context, I took a screenshot of this post yesterday, and I believe it was earlier this morning, it disappeared, it was taken down by Justin. It does make you think, was Candice Cooley advising him to take it down again? Just like in the past with when Justin was calling out Don Hatley, you know, stuff like that. We will take a closer look at the image itself in a second. Of course, be sure to share your thoughts and opinions in the comment section down below to how you think it could be related to the Dylan Rounds case, if it is, and if there's any other references or hidden meanings. Because in the comment section itself, Justin Rounds left a comment prompting towards JD, saying, JD might know why I posted this. Now, who is JD? Well, I'm correct in saying JD was Dylan Rounds' best friend. So it does seem likely that this post and the message behind it, which maybe not everyone may know of, but JD supposedly might, it must be to do with Dylan, whether it be a place where Dylan was farming in the past, or maybe a place of interest when trying to track down where Dylan Round's remains could be, or it's reflecting back on other parts in life to do with Dylan back in the past. You know, there's different ways of thinking about it, okay? It can be interpreted in all ways. But for now, at least from my point of view and perspective, I'm just going to take a closer look at the image itself, just in case it reveals anything of interest, right? So at first glance, it's dark. You'd assume maybe nighttime, right? Whether it's inside or outside of a building, the open landscape, it's dark. It's probably nighttime. It's not the first time a photo has been taken in the dark. You remember last time Justin Rounds took a photo uh, standing at the entrance of the grain shed property when it was night time. I, I don't know why, but I guess back then it was because Justin was out in the area looking for Dylan throughout the day and then returned back to the grain shed later on. So is there any link similarities here? Just depends where it's at. We're going to zoom in now. I probably could um, increase the brightness. I'll do that shortly. So first of all, when looking at the ground itself, do I see any footprints, any track marks? Not from the looks of it. I'd say that the ground appears to be concrete. It looks fairly smooth. There's no like markings or indentations in the ground to imply it's soft. So it does look hard and it looks like some kind of concrete. If that's the case, likely it would be inside of a building, right? A shed, a barn, um, not the grain shed, of course, not that. Justin's shop, I don't know. But you can see overhead, 
up there, you got these poles going across. What are those poles? What are they to do with? You've got one up close and one in the background. Though, to be honest, when I look into the distance, it looks a little bit light. It kind of looks like the sky. Then on the left-hand side, we're in the darkness. You can kind of make out what looks to be a big tree. Or it looks like a tree to me. I want to know your thoughts. It looks like a big conifer. I'd suggest that this is nighttime footage out in the open at an area where there's concrete, possibly. Ah, so where would that be then? Within Lucent, Utah or Idaho? Let me know your thoughts, okay? We haven't got much to go off from here because there was not much context given nor any of the photos, but if you've seen a photo like this before, or the area kind of feels familiar, feel free to give a location, okay? Besides that, in the background, you got one of those like Polaris ATV type off-road vehicles. We've seen them before. We've seen them in Montello, Nevada. We've seen them in Lucent, Utah, where it'd be people searching for Dylan Rounds, or just getting about day-to-day -day stuff, right? As well. On the right-hand side, there's like some kind of green vehicle there. I don't know if it's a quad bike or if it's some kind of lawnmower. And then behind that, you've got like another vehicle over there. It looks red. I don't know if it's a tractor or some other farming equipment, most likely farming equipment. There appears to be a light on there. Now, is that the light from the off-road vehicle itself or is it a reflection of what's behind the camera? I wonder. Like, did Justin drive down here, get out, walk around, and then take a photo or something? It's kind of hard to tell. We have zoomed out a little bit too much there, apologies. But it does look like, um, out in the open, there's a big tree in the background. There appears to be something over there as well. I can't quite make that out. I don't know if that's like a wheel trim, um, a wheel of a car. Or if it's something else. It's like a weird, like, white dot or two. Hmm. As for these poles, they look a little bit rickety. But are they cemented into the ground? I don't know. It's kind of hard to tell. It looks like it could be cemented in the ground or secured in, screwed in in some way. That being the case with concrete. Hmm. Interesting. Let me know your thoughts, okay? I think the one thing that does stand out to me, though, at least, and I've left it last, is this burn barrel. You see it? This decent-sized burn barrel. Got some... Is that cardboard in there of some sort? Maybe. Any holes in it? Probably at the bottom. Can't quite make it out. And there is, like, some, like, rubbish scattered about it. Maybe ash where a fire once took place and it came out the holes or it was emptied out for whatever reason. Any indication that there's been a recent fire? Maybe not. I mean, it looks like something's in the process of possibly being set on fire, maybe. I'm just thinking. Actually, I know, because that's to the vehicle, isn't it? I wasn't sure if that was like a shed in the background. And with that tree there, I don't remember seeing a tree anywhere else. Okay, fair enough. It's like, when you look at the burn barrel, maybe for some people, first thing that comes to your mind is the burn barrel, which was near to Brenner's trailer, near to the grain shed property in Lucent, Utah, right? But it's not the same one because you've got this, like, pole construction overhead thing, which obviously isn't there. Now... Could this be like a little race course? I don't know. I'm just thinking of the overhead thing, like the starting or finishing line. Has it got anything to do with Dylan getting involved in racing in the past, uh, hanging out with friends, maybe? I said, it's kind of cryptic. It's one of those where you've got to work it out for yourself and just make sense of it, right? But if you notice anything out of the ordinary, anything suspicious, strange, just let me know, okay? Yeah. So we'll return back to that shortly. We're just focusing back here, right? 
apologies, just get it back there. Hopefully you can see it. Just in rounds, JD might know why I post this. Now, did JD ever see it? Did he ever reply? I don't know, because the post was taken down, it was deleted. I tried looking for it again, I just simply couldn't find it, right? Why would Justin delete it? Why would Justin delete the post? That's what the uh, the main question is, right? I mean, in the past, right? In the past, all of the direct posts by Justin calling out Don Hatley, insulting him, uh, in a way, threatening him, giving a, a warning. They've all been taken down, right? We've documented it as best as we can on here. Um, came to that conclusion of it's understandable the way Justin rounds his feeling and the way the case has gone. I get that. Justin also um, publicly posted that text conversation in the past from what Candice Cooley said from her perspective. Candice Cooley telling off Justin Rounds for posting this and that public about Don Hatley, who could supposedly be a key witness and scaring him off or harming the case, shouldn't be doing that. So I guess that's what led to Justin taking down those different posts over time. You know, it's like a heat of the, heat of the moment, maybe overreacting or not thinking before taking action eventually realised and thought, hmm, this could harm the case, so I'll take it down. It's happened back then. Could you argue the same's happened now? I mean, you could do. It's not about Don Hatley, from the looks of it. So what else is it to do with? Because that theme of all those posts by Justin have been deleted... And they've all been in relation to the Dylan Rounds case and maybe a key suspect out there. And then you got a post like this with a photo of this area, wherever it is. And yet it was taken down too. So there's a bit of a pattern going on. Anything deleted by Justin is somewhat applied to the Dylan Rounds case. You know, it'd be fair to think like that, right? It would be fair and understandable. I just want to know your thoughts in the chat to what you think, okay, in general. And with it being applied to JD, Dylan Round's best friend, or was best friend when alive at the time, you know, what's it got to do with JD? JD, has he been involved in the case heavily? Not really. I guess it's understandable because, like, you don't want to be caught up in it all, all the questioning and interrogations and then being called out by other people online. It can get a bit nasty, could lead to harassment, a bit messy, right? Got to try and keep a low profile in a sense, but still honour and acknowledge Dylan's name in the background. I, I, I get that. And it might be to do with like the ages of the, you know, the different people, Dylan's friends, don't want to be caught up in all of the mess. So like the obvious adults, grown-ups, older people take care of it themselves that could be one way of thinking about it but why why would um, it need to be removed the post that's uh, why I want to know three people liked it at the time so more more than um, Justin saw it himself mm, I knew those other people were but he's saying JD might know why I post this so there's a reason behind it a hint a prompt a prompt to do with Dylan, a location where Dylan could be at, uh, reflecting back on the past. It must be one of those categories it fills under. What I want to do now is actually edit the photo and just see if I can increase the brightness to see if, you know, we can reveal any more in the background because of the darkness. Just give me a second. Something like that. Exposure. See what else we can reveal. So you, you get an idea, don't you? You don't want it too bright because it can mess up the quality. Shadows.
Hmm. Yeah, it looks weird when you do it dark like that. It goes kind of reddish, but there's no like fire in sight. Black point, warmth, tint, sharpness. I've never really understood the point of sharpness, at least on hair. It just seems to make it worse. Definition, vignette. Is that like the best that can be done here? Maybe. Get rid of that. Let's go back to the top. Exposure. That might be the best I can do. So you can kind of see the sky a little bit clearer, but like a darkish blue in a sense. You can make out the vehicles in the background. That could be, that does look like some kind of farming equipment. I don't know if it's a tractor with a trailer on the back. Huh. And then that green object there. If any of it makes sense to you, be, be sure to leave a comment down below. If you know what those pieces of equipment vehicles are in the background, leave your thoughts. Okay. Still seems like there's something over there, but it doesn't quite show up clear. That tree in the background, the shaping of it, and then that vehicle there, which I guess might be in use because the light's on, so is the ignition still on as well? And then that burn barrel too. Hmm, interesting, right? So I'd say in my opinion, at least, the photo, you know, as well as the title of the video, gotta be appropriate, gotta be careful, especially when wording stuff like this, okay? It's not guaranteed why it applies to the Dylan Brown's case, but it just seems kind of likely, right? And with the patterns, what we've seen in the past, it could be repeating itself once again, right? Just let me know your thoughts. Now, aside that, so we're going to look the at the comment section, right? Catch up there. That'll just be to do with the last video, what we did. Well, what I covered yesterday. Check the comments out. See if any questions that need to be answered or if there's any additional key information and go from there, okay? Here we are with the comments. Start from the bottom, work our way up. Robert saying shadow boxing. I don't know what he meant by that. Suburban robots, the modern reality. Uh, okay. Badger life. I didn't see Doom's post. Have no clue who that is. Okay, fair enough. You might come across Doom Ski Badger. Um, they've left the odd comment here and there. They say ha 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 a lot in their messages. Ha 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 ha. Don't know why. There must be a very, I don't know, person that laughs quite a lot, okay? Who knows? We got Brad saying, if Brenner went to Dylan's after the murder, based on Dylan's phone pings, yeah, did he drive his car or the seed truck? If an eyewitness statement later Saturday afternoon suggests a truck or car was seen leaving Dylan's, I can't remember the exact details. If that's the correct time frame of events, could that suggest Brenner did leave his car or sea truck at Dylan's and take Dylan's car from 8.30 a.m. back to the grain shed until the afternoon, dropping it back at Dylan's, maybe a quick pressure wash? And then driving back to his trailer in his car or sea truck. I don't know Dylan's truck mileage, but these questions answered would give more credit to the theory that Dylan's car was used by Brenner for something. Anyone want to answer that, feel free to. I'll give you my thoughts right now, Brad. So, are you saying about, did he... Yeah, you know, the thing is, it seems, you know, like proof. I know some people will probably still be a bit wary of it, but, you know, if Dylan's phone ping at a certain point was pinging down at the farm area right it must have got there somehow right and because of the time frame of it the phone ping itself it was after dylan's death so for the phone to be down there someone else would have had to have carried it down there in the pocket let's say but true the question would be who is it exactly? Who was it, you know, who actually went down to the farm? You, you probably say Brenner, right? Because Brenner's just taken Dylan out. Brenner's now in possession of Dylan's phone. There'd be no need to pass it around to anybody else in between. So you'd think, Brenner. Brenner went down to Dylan's farm. But why? Maybe to search for money? 
opportunity. No one's going to stop him. Maybe look for some firearms. Who knows? It could be any reason. Or was it, you know, trying to look for equipment items to use in the disposal of Dylan Rounds, the desecration? That's another possibility as well. But the next question would be, and all that in mind, how would Brenner get down there? What did he have at, at his disposal on the grain shed property going down to the farm? Well, Dylan's grain truck, yeah, but as for mobility, getting about, maybe the grain truck isn't the best option, like for speed, it's probably slower and a bit heavier. Um, anything else? Brenner's horse, but people quite a lot have said Brenner wouldn't ride it. Candice Cooley said the same thing, there was agreements there. So there'd be no need for Brenner to walk with his horse all the way down to the farm. It wouldn't really make much sense. And Brenner is a lazy person. So you can't imagine Brenner walking five miles. He'd probably get quite tired from doing that, let's just say. What about Brenner's own truck? Possibly. I mean, from what we've seen with the flyby footage, you know, when Heavy D went down there like 4th or 5th of June or so after Dylan's death and everything, there's a range of different vehicles parked up down there. I don't know who they exactly belong to, but there's a range of different vehicles. So there was opportunity to use one of which, one of any, to get down to the farm. The question though would be, were any of those vehicles taken in for like DNA testing, etc? Well, I never really heard about that, nor did I ever see it mentioned in the court documents. So maybe stuff wasn't found. Right, so what other options would there be? Hmm. The point that Brad mentions, interesting, you know, like with the witnesses seeing that truck leaving the grain shed property. Well, from what Walt and Michelle said, and from like Weezer's point of view, from what she's heard as well, and some other people, it was um a blue dually, dually, dually vehicle. I can't remember what a dually vehicle is, but they said it's like it's bigger than like a car, bigger in size. And I think the key colour, blue, well, that's different to um, Dylan's grain truck because the grain truck um, is like either red or white, not blue. So obviously, different vehicle used at that point. Now, it was later on in the day, though, when Walt and Michelle, the witnesses near Sun Tunnels, leaving or so, ended up passing by it, in which the truck was coming from the grain shared property, leaving, and that was just after 3 p.m. So that's much later on into the day. You know, Dylan's already, you know, been killed and possibly disposed of. After 3 p.m., well, Brenner's already down at Don's place having that barbecue. So what, grain shed property unattended for, no one around. So who was in that truck then? Why did they go down there? What was their purpose? And how long did they spend in the area until leaving makes you think right so i don't think it would have been brenner at that point driving that truck right at 3 p.m or just after i wouldn't say so and in general the truck itself did it even belong in the area to begin with or was it like a, a visiting by someone a visit i would say so brenner did have and did drive a blue pickup truck. So you could say there was links there, but that blue pickup truck was documented and caught on camera. If you go on Google Earth satellite imagery, back at Brenner's original place in Montello, Nevada, the outer skirt area where his trailer was, you can see the blue truck caught on camera, parked up. But people did say over time that it was old, it broke down, it was a bit rickety. Did it survive until 2022? I don't know. Maybe Brenner had a different truck from 2019 onwards. If anyone can reinforce it, confirm it or debunk it, feel free to do so, right? And if the, su if the suggestion is that the 2019 truck Brenner had it was the same one he had in 2022, would it be classified as a dually truck? Yes or no? If so, then maybe we can go on further and apply some additional links and it could 
if it really was the case, it would open up some very interesting possibilities and a very important missed opportunity originally. But we'll have to work through that bit by bit and not rush it, okay? I've got it under control. I'll see what some people think and then we'll go from there, okay? Let's just focus on what we're looking at right now at this moment, okay? So the time frame of it all happening, um, the witnesses seeing that truck leaving the Granger property, 3 p.m. after that. Yeah, that's much later on into the day. Doesn't really tie in line with the uh, the phone ping down at Dylan's farm earlier on in the day, right? We said about, what, 7.43 or 7.46 a.m. And then just after that, that's when Brenner supposedly, let's say, Brenner supposedly set on out and went down to Dylan's farm, hence then the phone ping, 30 minutes spent in the area, then returning back to the grain shed property, that would be kind of like 8.03 a.m. So all in a short space of time, right? So what, was he in a rush or was someone in a rush? Maybe, I mean, you can't blame the person because, you know, what they've done to Dylan, they're not going to be just casually strolling about they're going to take some form of action to you know move things on or try and clean up make some kind of attempt at that mm. hopefully part of that answers your point brad we got glenn missed but catching up fair enough um uh, what's this comment choc chocolate 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 love i probably said that wrong what are they saying can somebody tell me what happened to doug mm, no thanks and Betty Hayward and Jim Terry show, I'm so far behind. Are they all banned or did they fall apart? Well, in terms of Jim Terry, Mr. X, yeah, the channels were terminated. But in terms of, I guess, like their following or some people on their panel, they it, they did kind of fall apart. Some people did break away and move off into different directions. So that did happen as well. As for Doug... Um, no thanks, channel terminated. Betty Hayward's original channel terminated, but set up a new account or already had a new account in place. So there's that. Just see what the comments are anyway. What's this? Robert, fall together, fall apart. Right, anyway. So this person again, who summarised it pretty well when it came to Salty Pancakes... We'll just read this now in response, which summarises it. And I think it does provide a bit of an update as well regarding mm, no thanks. So I'll probably include that in the title of the video too, so it's relevant. Okay. So it says, Doug from mm, no thanks got suspended from YouTube for ban evasion. Right, so that was the final nail in the coffin. He tried to appeal it, but he accidentally filed his appeal under the wrong Gmail. So he was panicking all weekend. It's all on Twitter. A few hours ago, Doug did a somber live on crime and justice, whilst his co-host Lisa agreed with everything he said. He didn't really take any responsibility for his behaviour and didn't give his audience the true reason for his termination. Doug said he's still having trouble with his appeal and he lost all his videos because Google locked his account. The good news is he supposedly got a new job in South Carolina so he'll survive in the real world. As for your band question, I don't think Doug, Betty and Jim ever formed a band, so they never fell apart. I think Warlight Raph would make a better lead singer, in my honest opinion, and Betty Hayward would look really cute playing the tambourine. Warlight Raph could call his new UK band the Raffies. <laughs> Okay, so um, just being lighthearted, okay, it's a good, good um, suggestion. So basically, chocolate love spelt the word band wrong, okay? Should have been B-A-N-N-E-D, I think. <laughs> Even though I'm playing up myself in my silly mind. 
But basically, the way it's been spelt here, band in like a band of, you know, singers, uh, like a rock band, you know, that type of stuff. So uh, just play on words. But yeah, okay, so what, the Raffies, some kind of band, Betty Hayward on a tambourine. Are you hearing this, Miss T? What's this all about? What's this all about? Watch her crazy playing the little Indian cymbals. You know, they're almost the same size as the nips. But this time they're attached on some rope. So she's restricted in where she can use them. Ooh, can't have that. Anyway, let me know your thoughts behind all of that. What is going on there? Some kind of island band? Well, if that's really the case, Warlike Raph is stuck in Uganda after that leaf flung him off the island. What a shame. But I think it was Nance or Nancy that said she was going to help me with a private helicopter to bring me back to the island or so. Did you hear that, Miss T? All kinds of things are going on in the background, right? Hmm. That appears to be it for the comments here and the little update as well to do with um, No Thanks. So um, in regards to um, No Thanks, I assume that by sending that appeal, making the appeal under the other Gmail account, which made him panic, was the other account he had on YouTube, which at the time classified as ban evasion, and that's another thing going against YouTube TOS. I assume that's what it actually meant. And uh, Doug making that mistake at the time. Correct me if I'm wrong, okay? As I said, when it comes to uh, Doug, his actions, the consequences it's led to, and, you know, bad things happening, and, maybe, you know, the people out there impacted in some way, right? You know, it's just unfortunate that the all the different cases which have been documented over time, that material has been lost for good, including Dylan Rounds. Knock-on effect, right? But... It's not the complete end of the world because although it's probably hard to find on my channel, I did document every update or at least most of the updates between Doug and Candice Cooley. It was only me, like, I, I made, like, bullet points, summarised, you know, what the videos were all about and then I spoke about it and told you the information and add-on points and my analysis of it, so... If you ever, although it's not the best option, but if you ever wanted to hear about all those interviews and all that information talked about by Candice Cooley on Doug's channel, although you can't see the true interviews, you can look at the summaries which were provided by me when documenting it all and giving my opinions, all available on my channel and still publicly viewable, okay? So that's one thing at least. I think, you know, the overall theme has been is at any point, Content, material, post, comments, channels can just go like that into dust. Whether it be by choice or not, or by mistake. It can just be deleted, it can disappear, it can be removed. And, you know, if it's to do with a case, it's important. Some information, material, you can never get a hold of it or see it ever again. And it might have revealed something. It, there might have been a link somewhere. But what do you do? What can you do? Not much. Kenny of each case, the same thing happened there. So you just have to be kind of alert, right? You don't know when the next thing will show up and you don't know when it will disappear. Sometimes it's just right place, right time. And I guess as of recently, I was in the right place at the right time. Hence why I was able to show that screenshot to you of the post by Justin, okay? If you have just suddenly joined, uh, we have reached the end. Welcome though. Make sure to rewind back to the beginning of this video, okay? As for my last video I did where we looked at the history of Salty Pancakes allegations, you know, labelling everyone under the sun without really any proof, kind of reckless and a bit destructive. As I said, I just wanted to know people's thoughts about that, you know, especially people that may watch Pancakes' channel, look up to him, or are just casual fans. Do you think it's normal? Do you think it's acceptable going about labelling people this and that and spreading false, serious allegations which could destroy other people? Is that honestly practical? Do you agree with that? Let me know your thoughts down below, okay? But I think we'll leave it there for now. Hopefully you've learned something new or it sparked some intrigue behind all this, the photo. Let me know your additional comments down below. If you've got any grievances, list them too or questions. 
and we'll respond back to them at whatever point, okay, as soon as possible. But for now, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye and good night.